Hi, Uriah. Um, just questions. Three twenty. What's up, Kevin? All right, bud. Okay. Um, I guess the question is about dealing with uh, the angles that the Cruz gives, and it seems like you know he's very slippery, and guys aren't able to figure out those angles. And you know, you coach guys have been you know in, in with him a lot, and uh, so I wonder if that's an advantage, and if you fig feel like you figured out how to solve the angles where other guys haven't been able to do it. Um, you know, I I don't know. We'll know when we get out there, but uh, I don't plan on being beat up by the guy. I don't care how much he moves or anything. And the angles, I mean, I've watched a lot of his fights and I've coached against him, and, and there's some real consistency in what he does. You know, it looks like it's all over the place, but, um, you know, it's a lot of the same motions with different moves on, on reaction. And um, I'm the same type of fighter where I fight off reaction. So uh, it's going to be action, reaction. It's going to be exciting, and uh, uh, I'm going to solve the problem. You know, I just. Uh Give your thoughts about Dominic after the first time you fought him. I mean, now it's four years later, and you guys are fighting him. One of the biggest fights you've ever seen putting on. Did you ever imagine him getting to that point? I mean, he was on the field when he fought you, but did you think he was something special uh, the first time you fought him? Um, I didn't think much about him. I don't dream for other people. I dream for myself, so I didn't pay much attention, to be honest. And uh, credit to him for sticking with it. You know, the, the greats in this sport are consistent and persistent and don't stop when they get. Um, you know, face adversity, so credit to him on that. But, uh, you know, I'm that same guy. That's the reason I've been at the top of every organization and every weight that I've been in since I started in this game, since my third fight. So um, you're looking at two guys that uh, are determined and hungry and, and want that belt. So uh, didn't think about him at all, but he was thinking about me a lot, almost kind of weird. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? What kind of advantage do you think having this your first UFC fight on your belt gives you over him who hasn't been in you know the bigger stage, the bigger cage yet? Not much. I don't see, think he's the type of guy that, that really gets bothered by that stuff. I don't feel like I am either. But uh, you know, we actually had to spend some time together uh, doing a uh, something for the for the troops, and he was big. He was cutting a lot of weight. He had a couple pounds on me, maybe about five pounds. So. Um, the weight cut's going to be a difficult thing for him. It's not going to be too bad for me. I've always been, you know, fairly good with that, and, and I'm getting better now that I've had my third fight. This is my third fight at 35, so um, that might be a factor. And uh, the other factor is he's fighting me, you know. I, I, there's all sorts of guys that look great when they fight, and then uh, <clears throat> it's a different story when they get right in front of me, and, and uh, I plan on that being the case. Yeah, you're right on! Yeah, what's up, Tito? What's up, boy? California. <laughs> Uh, with his style, the way he moves around so much, does the bigger cage give him uh, more room to move around? Is that an advantage? Uh, I don't really think of it like that. You know, I'm not like a guy that like cages people up and, and stuff like that. Uh, I like a lot of open motion, I like the scramble and stuff like that. So, um, you know, people talk about his speed, and uh, he looks pretty fast, but I'm I'm very fast. And you can see, I just did my workout. I did you know 25, 30 minutes straight, no problem fast, you know, right before weigh-ins. I'll be heavier in the uh, fight night, and, and I feel great. It seems like, you know, a lot of times we see uh, emotional fights where both guys really dislike each other. Here it seems a lot more one way. Dominic seems to dislike you a lot more than you dislike him. Is that kind of a weird dynamic on this place? Uh, you know, it's just like one of those things, like, I really feel like, you know, if anyone ever had an issue with me growing up, my mom would always just be like, he's just jealous, you know? <laughs> and uh, I think that's what's going on here. You know, I, I, I don't really, I'm not into disliking people, but uh, if someone's my enemy, bad move, you know? That's the way it's been my whole life, and, uh, you know, so uh, I plan on making them look dumb outside the ring and beating them up inside the ring. Mess with the wrong guy. You know, you talked about, you read that how you haven't really been thinking about it, but have you been having fun with all this? How much he's been, actually, you've been on his head, and how much the media has been playing along with all this? Yeah, I think it's great, you know. Uh, like I said, I get the green light to, to, to strike back. That's fun for me. I, I can be creative. You know, nothing too distasteful, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good communicating with people, and, and I've, I've got nothing to do but train and hang out with my buddies and, and be creative, you know. I'm not doing anything else. So, you know, this is, this is my life, and, and it's fun to, to, you know, be a part of all this, you know, including the promotion. You talked about watching all these fights and movements and everything. Uh, 
How much do you think he has changed? Obviously, he said he made a mistake about taking the fight to the ground to quit with you in the first fight, you know, four years ago. You have changed. You know, how much do you think he has changed in terms of his, his technique or his ability? I think he's changed a lot. You know, one of the biggest things that he's changed is uh, basically the the ability to uh, have his own style that, that works for him. You know, he, he's he's a lot bigger than the first time we fought, and uh, I mean, both of us were really small for the weight at that time. Just kind of, you know, just the way it happened. But um, I mean, he looked like he's transformed, grown into his body, or done whatever. And uh, the bottom line is, you know. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. It's two new guys fighting. Uh, I do have a mental victory over him and a, and a physical victory, but uh, you know he seems to be pretty confident. You're right. Talk about headlining UFC 132 and what it feels like to be on. You know, again in the main event with uh, such legends as T. Ortiz and Andre Silva. Man, it means a lot to me. You know, I've said it time and time again. Uh, I've been a huge fan of this sport ever since it came out. You know, and. Uh, I remember the first time watching Tito fight and, and the charisma he brought, and I, I like I like the the bravado he had, and, and I remember being disappointed when when he lost that that fight to Bollinger or Bolander, uh, you know, being pissed off, and and it's been that way for a lot of these guys, Vitor Belfort and uh, you know Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, uh, Mark Coleman, Tank Abbott, you know, these are all guys that I I was just infatuated with and and you know cheering for and. And to be on a main stage with guys like Vanderlei Silva and Tito Ortiz is, is huge, being the main event, and, and um, it's just cool. Right, you mentioned uh, just now that you had a mental victory over him. Do you think that you have a mental edge, especially when you two are kind of uh, around each other in the same room? Did you ever get that sense that you kind of, uh, I don't know, that you just have that uh, advantage over him? Uh, you know, in the fight world, who knows? But in the real world, yes. And uh, I mean, I feel like you know, if we ever can be cordial, there's a lot that I could teach him, and uh, I think he knows that. So uh, I think there's, you know, although he dislikes me, I think there's some admiration there that he's, you know, not letting on about, and, and that irks him also. So, uh, you know, I, the bottom line is I don't really care about anything inside or outside the cage. I care about getting that belt and fighting tooth and nail for it. Um, and of all the fighters that participated today, you probably had the most intense media workout. Uh, all, almost all of it was stand-up. Obviously, as a fighter, you have to work on every part of your game, but for this specific fight or this specific opponent, was your stand-up the focal point in your training camp? Uh, no, not necessarily. I, I spread it out pretty, pretty well. Um, for this, you know, I, I have to use my time sparingly. I was up this morning doing interviews all day. And I had to, uh, you know, do, you know, questions for the countdown stuff and everything else. So I'm putting all my, uh, putting all my workouts in right here, getting a, a good workout in so I can lose some weight. And that was the most intense that I could do right now. I, I didn't really feel like getting in a grappling match, but uh, I grapple tense, my favorite thing to do. Visit El Octagono for all the latest in MMA news. Fight results, interviews, live event coverage, podcast, and video capsules. All this and much more in Spanish. Find all your MMA needs here inside El Octagono, the number one source dedicated 100% to MMA in Spanish. El Octagono.com